Hello and welcome once again to our cozy devotional time here at Church of the Palms. Let's begin with some music as we prepare our hearts. Would you pray with me? Oh God, we enter your presence today, hoping for something new, something meaningful, something helpful. Bless these few moments, we pray. Amen. So today, I want to start things off a bit differently. If you're anything like me, and I hope you aren't, you may have trouble linking familiar Bible stories to their location in the Bible. So if someone mentions a story or event linked to Jesus, I never know which gospel to turn to. And to see if that's the case with all of us, I thought I would offer up a little quiz and see if you know where to find the following quotes or lessons. Ready? I need book and chapter for this. All right. Number one, judge not that you may not be judged. Any ideas? Okay, that one is... Matthew chapter 7, Matthew 7. Number two, seeing the speck in someone else's eye, but not the log in your own. That one is also Matthew chapter 7. Number three, cast not your pearls before swine. All right, Matthew 7. You starting to see a trend here? Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and ye shall find. That one is somewhere between Matthew 6 and Matthew 8. All right, number five, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The golden rule, Matthew 7. Wolves in sheep's clothing, Matthew 7. You will know a tree by its fruit, Matthew 7. Building your house on a rock. Can you say it together with me, please? Matthew 7. Yes, that's right. My point is pretty obvious, I think. The one, this one chapter from the book of Matthew is absolutely loaded with many of the most famous and most frequently quoted lines from Jesus' ministry. If you are limited to one chapter from the Bible for daily reading for the rest of your life, and I don't know why you would be, this might be the one to select. There's so much meat in there, so many sermons. For today's purpose, 
I would like to look at the first part of chapter 7. Please read with me. Do not judge so that you may not be judged. For the judgment you give will be the judgment you get. And the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, let me take the speck out of your eye while the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye and then you will be able to, then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. And skipping to verse 12, the golden rule. In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. For this is the law and the prophets. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I'm still suffering the effects of jet lag after a wonderful trip to Scotland and Sweden. The short version of my travel report would have to include the fact that I experienced a so-called thin place in Iona, Scotland, where I was warned it might happen. A thin place being, of course, one of those places where the earth and heaven seem unbelievably close together and that you feel like you can just reach out and touch God. So they have a sixth century monastery there, 538 AD, I think it is, from the first arrival of Christianity in Europe. I found a quiet place to soak in the atmosphere. And when I found a reader with texts and liturgy, I sensed God's presence in a deep, mysterious, wonderful way. Here is one of those texts. Jesus, you commanded waves to be still and calmed a stormy sea. Quieten now our restless hearts that they may find rest in you. So now we surrender for these moments our speech, knowing that beneath the silence is a deeper word and that even when we say nothing, you are still listening. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, we could stop our devotions right there, right? Probably should, in fact. But I will continue on and say that next, a week later, I found yet another thin place, this time completely unexpectedly, in the 13th century church of my childhood town of Rättvik, Sweden. The Church of Sweden is close to our own Lutheran church in theology and practice, and my timing was such that I got to attend High Mass on July 2nd. I can safely say that no one in that congregation was more excited and more emotional about that service, no one more looking forward to sharing in communion with these strangers from 50 years earlier in my life. And so here it is where I encountered what might be the most basic, simple sermon I have ever heard, focusing on, you guessed it, the golden rule. The priest laid out the meaning and application on this familiar passage, not in flowery words of exalted oratory, but in simple thoughts, choosing illumination through clarity and honesty. He began, as Matthew 7 does, with some thoughts on judging or criticizing others. This included a warning about judging ourselves. So many of us end up discouraged and exhausted by our own negative thoughts and self-evaluations. We are the hands of God, people. Let's take some delight in the way God has made us. And here comes the first application of the golden rule, that we aren't just talking about how we treat people, but even how we judge them in silence. Think about it. As you're sitting, as you're sizing up your fellow Christian's clothing choice, or that cashier who isn't fast enough for your taste, or that homeless guy with a cardboard sign, as you are judging them, can you stop and think how you hope they don't judge you? If someone is judging you with that sideways look, can you honestly say you haven't done the exact same thing to half a dozen people without saying anything out loud? So God has given us this beautiful measuring stick 
It's a measuring stick that we carry with us wherever we go, no matter what the situation. And it's called, well, we'll call it the golden ruler. It's the simplest tool in our kit and the one we need to whip out the most often. It has the built-in answer to all our interactions with our neighbors, any day and every day. It is a measuring stick that asks us, how would we like to be treated in this situation? It's a simple question, and we immediately know the answer. That is the built-in part. Jesus doesn't have to explain to us how we would like to be treated. That's something every human knows. We just need the reminder to use that golden ruler dozens of times a day. And when I went for a walk later that same day, I found my, myself using this simple tool to help me to interact with people who were all around me, locals and tourists, enjoying the weather. In other words, I think I immediately became a better person, a better citizen, a better representative of the kingdom of heaven, just as a result of this simple sermon. The priest turned out to be the brother of my classmate from grades one through four. I had no idea. I didn't discover that until well after the sermon was over. But God used these basic words to reset my journey. It was the thinnest of places and I was the closest to God. Let's pray. Oh God, bring us back to what is important. Bring us back to you. Amen.